On this episode, I'm going to be showing you five different ways on how you can extend these short wires coming out from your electrical box and make them a little bit longer for you to work on. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So just a quick disclaimer, we are going to be working with electrical components on today's episode. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always make sure that you're always up to date with your current local electrical codes and you have the proper permits. Make sure you turn off the power from your circuit breaker and if you're unsure and unconfident with working with any type of electrical, please hire a certified and qualified professional. With that being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get into today's episode. So in a perfect world, in every one of your electrical boxes, your wiring should come out at least six inches from the sheathing that's penetrating through this electrical box or J-box. And if you measure the sheathing from the where it penetrates to the J-box, it should be a quarter inch per code. And if you're going over um, the wiring itself, it should be a total of six inches with three inches coming out from the J-box. In my case, I live in a 1970 home, which has been probably modified and and probably rewired so many times and replaced with so many different types of electrical outlets that my example showing here on this mock-up where the wiring pretty much is so short and not meeting code like this. So in that case, we're gonna have to do something to extend this so that we can work on it for future work. Starting with method number one, one of the easiest ways to extend these little shorties right here is pretty much extending the wire by adding another piece of wire on each end. But doing that, you have two options that you can use. You can either use wire nuts, but what I prefer are these Wego wire connectors. These are the 221s. They come in various options. You got five, three. In this case, we're gonna be using the two. Just insert it through, lock it in place, put the other wire in place, boom, pretty much done. If you're interested on these Wego wire connectors or wire nuts, I'll leave them in the description down below so you can check out this product right here and try it out for yourself along with every other product that I use in this video. So before even starting anything, you always want to make, test your wiring for voltage. So you always use your voltage tester right here and check each wire to see which one is hot or not. That being said, you want to make sure that this is truly the hot wire because sometimes the wiring, sometimes the neutral is determined to be hot depending on how old your housing is or Sometimes there's an indicator here that this is the new hot and it has ele black electrical tape wrapped around here. You just wanna make sure that this is neutral, this is hot, this is ground, and they haven't been switched out. Hopefully that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, leave me in the comment section down below. I'd be glad to explain it better for you friends. Let's assume that everything is the way it is. Now it's all a matter of just connecting each according to their color. You go from hot to hot. Neutral to neutral. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But I wanna also add that if you're doing the Wego connectors, make sure everything is nice and insulated all the way up to the connectors and that your wiring is touching the ceiling of each one. Method number two is an easy method as well. Um, it, depending on which J box that you have, in this example that I have right here, these wires go through these penetrations and they are retained by these little tiny clips which you can pretty much use your needle nose pliers and pull them back. Now, if you're lucky and you have excess wiring back there, maybe that these wirings were just accidentally pushed in and it got refed out from the J box. So what you can do is to test that out, you can lift up these little tiny tabs with your needle nose pliers and you can just pull more wiring out of there so that's if you you know sometimes these boxes get worked on a lot and they excellent these wires get pushed in a little bit and they get recessed and you don't see the the cable sheathing anymore if you're lucky and you do that you can sometimes you know lift up those tabs and pull the wiring a little bit through and with with that being said you might get that more wiring out of what you've got method number three requires a little bit more work in most cases, you probably have new work that's already installed there, meaning that the J-Box is actually nailed to the stud right here. So you have no choice but to pretty much take out the J-Box itself. So what you're gonna use is a handheld hacksaw 
or if you have a re re reciprocating saw with or um, uh, oscillating tool, whichever you're going to use. But what you're going to do is you're going to try and find out where that is secured, whether the studs on the left side, the right side. You want to determine where that's actually nailed onto the stud. So you can do that by peeking onto between each J box or just testing out and using your stud finder and finding out which stud is this actually connected on. And you can just start hacking away onto that nail so that you can release this J box out from its hole. A trick to this is you push it in a little bit, tilt it like so, and then it will pop out because you can't just take this out because it has these tabs right here that will prevent you from pulling out a drywall. And it's easy as that. If you're lucky enough, you might end up having a little bit of extra cable right here. Now again, that's very um, rare in older homes. Sometimes if you had, you know, if you had a really great electrician that was thinking way ahead back in the day and like, oh man, this guy's gonna be working on this J box and probably wanna relocate it in the future. I'm gonna give this guy a little bit more extra cable for him to, you know, foolproof him in the future. Then you would probably end up with something like this with a little extra. So not always the case, but newer homes should have a little bit of extra for you to work on. So just in case you wanna relocate this box somewhere else, or you wanna, you know, just giving you some excess stuff to work with. So if you have this kind of, if you have this situation where you have this excess, perfect. Method number four is a little similar. You're gonna take out the J box out from that hole right here. And let's assume that this wire is pretty much um, really short and not this long. You wanna see and look inside the hole if it is, there is staples, um, it is stapled onto the stud. So I made this scenario right here where this is actually stapled to the stud right there. And if that's the case, then you can go ahead and do your best. Maybe you can't reach it with um, a flathead screwdriver, but you wanna be as careful as possible or try to find a way to cut that or take out that cable so that you can probably get some more slack out of this cable right here. So that being said, once you take that out, then you have, will have a little bit more extra to pull out from this hole right here to your J box. Before we get into method number five, I wanna add this little tip, friends, that right when you take this new work out of the box, obviously you've cut the nails, you can't re-nail it inside that hole. Your other option is using old work J boxes. Now there's two types of old work J boxes. One of them is this one, which I really like, is the adjustable old work J box, which pretty much has these two screws where you can locate it anywhere onto the stud, or you can use one of these old work, which is, has these little flappers, which are better for light switches, um, not so much for outlets, because in my honest opinion, they if you use them on outlets, they tend to a wiggle a lot from the drywall because this is just gonna get sandwiched between the drywall anyways that's not too good with all that movement from outlets which is this was perfect for switches where you can go you know it doesn't meet so much wiggle over time method number five is quite similar to method number three and four you're still gonna take out the J box out of that hole and let's just assume that if you do take it out you have you have it stapled right here but still it is way too short you try taking out the staples, you try pulling it, there is no excess wire and it still doesn't meet your needs. The only option is take out the staples, follow the cable run, and you might have to relocate and find a new hole so that you can take out that cable, reroute it onto that new hole right there. This is a bonus method. I'll call this bonus method five plus, okay, or method number six, whichever. That is pretty much routing a new cable from your circuit breaker calling it a home run, all right? It's a home run coming up straight from your circuit breaker all the way to the new outlet, okay? So that is pretty much your last option. I wouldn't go there, not unless you really need to because that's a lot of work trying to feed new wires and wiring on here. I'm not gonna get into that method. So this video is made, mostly made for, you know, showing you the easy way to the moderate way of getting this more wiring out of your J box. So friends, those are all the methods that I can show you on extending those shorties out of your J box or electrical boxes. Let me know in the comment section down below which method you use or which method you prefer. 
Okay, friends, let me know in the comment section below what you think of all the methods. And if you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe and notification bell. And also friends, make sure you stay tuned because I'll be announcing the 100,000 subscriber giveaway on how to enter and how to win that. So make sure you stay tuned on the future videos. And thank you once again, friends, for tuning in, for all your love and support. I'll see you friends on the next episode.